Welcome to Kitco News, I'm Niels Christensen. Gold prices are holding support above $1,800 an ounce. The market is being driven by record demand for gold-backed exchange-traded products. But here to talk about the physical side is Peter Hug, Global Trading Director for Kitco Metals. Peter, thank you very much for joining us today. Niels, pleasure to be here again. Peter, it's always a pleasure to talk with you and, and I'd love to get your insights on the health of the physical market. You know, we, we see record demand for gold-backed ETFs, but I'm sort of wondering, I mean, what, what are you looking at when it comes to physical demand for the metal? Well, I mean, uh, obviously back in uh, the early days of COVID, uh, you know, the sort of the March-April uh, time window, uh, you know, the premium shot through the roof. And uh, again, without sounding too much like a broken record, we advise clients not to chase the premiums. And, uh, you know, except for maybe one or two uh, products, uh, premiums are from a from a wholesale perspective, uh, similar now to where they were pre COVID, um, you know, just to sort of put it into context, uh, platinum, I'm sorry, <laughs> I've got platinum on the mind because platinum has been a little bit uh, volatile lately, uh, the gold and uh, gold eagles and gold buffaloes, um, when COVID uh, and uh, started and the shutdowns took place in the U.S. economy, uh, you know, premiums on those coins were, you know, sometimes north of $200, depending on the dealer you went to. I mean, mm -hmm. again, ridiculous premiums. Silver Eagle premiums were anywhere from $10 to $15 over spot. And, you know, as you're aware, we told our clients uh, to stay away from chasing those premiums, uh, you know, to buy uh, products uh, that would get them into the market because uh, we believe the market was uh, about to, um, uh, to uh, surge. Uh, that was when gold was at 1500 and silver was uh, just in around the $14 level. I mean, our target uh, that I set back then in April, I set a target of 1925 and silver, which we hit yesterday. And I uh, had an 1825 target on gold, which we also hit yesterday. Um, and uh, we suggested that the premiums would come more into line with the market. But if you wanted to get in the market to uh, protect your price point, uh, there were other alternatives. And if you look at the premiums today on gold eagles and gold buffaloes uh, uh, from the U.S. Mint, uh, they are being made available to the wholesale market at where they were pre-COVID, which is about 3%. Uh, so at current market, that's a, a wholesale distributor cost of a roughly $60. Um, and then there's generally a retail markup, depending on size that you transact, that'll range anywhere from about $20 to about $50. So you are able to get eagles and buffaloes south of $100 premium now. Uh, you're able to get silver eagles, which we're trading at a $15 premium, somewhere in the neighborhood of around $5 over spot. Again, depending on the dealer. Mm -hmm. There are still dealers out there at $10 over. Um, RCM product like gold maples uh, that we're trading at, you know, 100, 120 over spot, you can now pick up uh, in around the $60 uh, premium range. So the physical premiums have come in and obviously clients now are paying $300 more for gold and they're paying uh, $4 more for silver. But, you know, had they bought an alternative product back uh, when the low hit, they could now convert that product into physical and save themselves uh, almost 50 to 75 percent of the premium relative to the market that they were paying uh, when COVID first broke out. Wow. I guess this is like this is this is the whole point about being strategic. It's not just about chasing the market. It's it's, you know, there, there are different ways to be strategic, uh, to be a strategic goal. I mean, again, it was the psychology of the investor, whether you trusted those alternative investments sort of to, uh, to park into the metal until the premiums came down, uh, you know, is a personal decision. And, uh, you know, there are investors out there that uh, will uh, will not touch anything except physical. And, you know, they paid, uh, they paid the premium price for it. You know, unfortunately, uh, you know, silver's gone up some 40% from the lows in uh, March. Uh, but a lot of these investors are still out, you know, 50, 60 percent because they pay twenty five dollars for silver. Uh, so, you know, they didn't benefit at all from the four dollar move uh, in the silver price uh, since uh, since March. But from an investor uh, perspective, we've seen actually very good two sided action here once gold uh, breached eighteen hundred and silver got around nineteen hundred, uh, especially on the gold side. Uh, you know, gold's not uh, far away from its high of twenty eleven. That's about one hundred dollars away. So there's a lot of people that have held on to their positions. Uh, unfortunately, there may be some that bought at the top in twenty eleven. But I would say a majority of investors uh, that have bought gold over the past uh, 
10 year period, say, or nine year period, uh, are definitely in the market well below this price. And we are seeing uh, some people taking profits. Uh, uh, and uh, so we're getting good two sided action. Uh, there's, uh, as I wouldn't say, as much selling uh, of physical material as there is buying, uh, but there is a good amount of selling at these levels. Uh, so I'd say the ratio is about 70% people still buying in this market uh, from a retail perspective and 30% selling. So uh, premiums have come down. Uh, it sounds like there, you know, there's healthy uh, uh, activity in the marketplace. Do, are we over the supply crunch of, you know, that, that COVID-19 created? Um, is that over? No. Uh, again, it, it depends on the product line. Uh, the, uh, all of the mints are still on allocation. Uh, which means if you wanted to go in and buy a half a million uh, one ounce silver maple leaves, uh, you'd probably have to wait, uh, you know, six weeks to get that filled. Um, so, you know, the dealers are getting their allocations. They're relatively modest, uh, you know, uh, maybe 100,000 silver coins a week. And, uh, you know, in, in the gold context of coins, uh, somewhere between two and 5,000 coins a week. Uh, where, you know, under normal conditions, uh, full production, uh, uh, supply chains working properly, uh, you know, getting 10, 20,000 coins, uh, gold coins a week and, you know, a half a million uh, silver coins a week was normal course, uh, normal course order size. Uh, so there is still some constraints as to volume. Um, so the supplies are coming, but they're coming in uh, uh, below what the demand is. So you'll see dealers uh, that are still offering the product, but sometimes offering the product a week or 10 days out uh, because they're waiting for their next allocation. Uh, and the allocations come out every Friday uh, from a Canadian perspective and in the U.S. on Mondays. And then the dealers know what they have and then they decide whether they want to pre-sell that allocation or, or uh, you know, hold some back because it's always a question mark whether or not the week after you're going to get the same allocation or not. So it really is. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a bit of a, a guessing game mm -hmm. uh, and you don't want to get into a situation where you've promised the client delivery a week out and then you don't get your allocation. He's waiting another two weeks. Um. Okay, so uh, and and how do you think this impacts prices? I mean, obviously, like you said, um, gold reached your target of eighteen twenty five, silver reached your target above nineteen dollars. Um, you know, it does does the supply issues impact prices? I mean, are you looking to adjust your forecast? I mean, do you see gold prices going much higher, silver prices going much higher? What do you what are your expectations for for year end? I'm, I'm extremely bullish at the precious metals market. Uh, uh, my projection was that we would take out the high by year end. I think that'll happen a lot sooner. Uh, my concern is this resurgence of, of, uh, of the outbreak of COVID and the possibility of some of the bigger states like California is already starting to increase their uh, shutdown measures, uh, you know, going back to where we were in March. I do not see a full close uh, closing of the economies. Uh, but certainly, uh, you know, economies like California, Arizona, Texas, uh, Florida uh, are going to continue to be impacted by this uh, surge in, in COVID cases, uh, which is going to be somewhat negative, uh, obviously, in the short term for the economy. I, I think the big thing I'm looking for here is the end of the month. Uh, you know, the federal government has basically created a disincentive by offering an additional, uh, I think it's $600 a week for people on unemployment. So, you know, the places that were opening were having trouble rehiring staff because it was uh, uh, financially better for them just to not work. Now, the question is, will the Fed uh, uh, extend that package past July 31st? If they don't, I think there's, uh, there's going to be a lot of pain in the economy. And in that context, I'm still somewhat worried. Uh, well, not somewhat. I am worried about the valuation in the equity market. And if you look at the charts, gold has actually been tracking with the Dow. So as the Dow has been rising, so has gold, uh, because money is looking to find a place to go. And, and some people are chasing the stock market, but other people uh, are, are getting into the harder commodities, such as oil. I mean, oil's gone from pretty much zero to back up uh, north of $40. So they're looking for places to deploy their funds. But when the stock market crashes and it generally, well, by crashing, I mean, if it just lo goes lower, um, 
it's usually because there's bad uh, news out on COVID. It's, it's usually not anything else. Uh, and they're worried about economic recovery. And that, in my opinion, could stall this rally in gold and silver as, as people may become more worried and may look to raise some cash uh, until this uncertainty sort of gets a little bit more understood. So in the short term, I think there might be some weakness, uh, but over the medium to longer term, and you know, I'm not one of these guys who says, yeah, well, in five years, gold's going to be at this. Uh, but I think the trend on the metals is definitely higher, and I certainly think the 2011 high on gold uh, is a given to be taken out uh, maybe as early as September, but certainly by year end. Um, so, okay, interesting comments about, about equity markets. I'm sort of wondering, you know, like, um, do, do you see the potential to go back down to the March lows if, if we do see uh, liquidation in, in the, the, the Dow and the uh, S&P 500? Um, does gold go down or do, does it still sort of hold some uh, strength in, in this market? You know, it's not, a, it, the direction is important. It's more the velocity that I'd be looking at. Uh, I'd be, uh, I mean, is it possible that we'll see the March lows in the equity market? Absolutely. I mean, if this COVID crisis does become another major crisis and the hospitals can't keep up with it and the governments are forced to shut down the economy a second time, I think it's unlikely, but if they do, uh, then uh, taking uh, taking out that March low in the equity market is certainly possible. Um, and again, we're looking at global events as well. Uh, so now the banks, uh, you know, the second quarter bank earnings were dismal this morning. That was to be expected. But if these businesses can't regenerate, there comes a point, uh, you know, when the landlords are going to be looking for rent. And uh, not only on a commercial uh, perspective, but also on a, a personal perspective, uh, you know, just people that are uh, renting uh, apartments and homes, uh, the landlords are not going to give them much more time uh, to start paying rent. And so that could create another crisis, uh, potentially in the housing market. And if that happened, it would really impact the banks. Uh, and then we could have a meltdown in the stock market. Again, I don't want to be chicken little here, but there are some real risks to the economy until we can get you know, regenerated here and we can have some type of growth. And right now the growth is still anemic in, in the economic recovery. Mm -hmm. um, last question then, I mean, uh, you know, obviously really uh, you're bullish on gold, uh, solid reasons to be bullish on gold. What about silver? I mean, you know, silver's reached your, your peak um, or your target for the year. Do you see it going higher? I mean, if we do have more economic weakness, uh, does that hurt, you know, sort of silver's industrial side and, and does that weigh on investor sentiment? Yeah, um, I am, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying 1925 was the top. That was my target. I, I'm still bullish silver. Um, uh, but gold at 1925 is not going to be a $50 silver price like it was in 2011. Uh, again, because there is a lot of demand destruction on the industrial side in silver. I mean, the solar industry is is is, is, is working at about 15% capacity, which is a big user of silver. So they're from an industrial perspective, and that's why you're not really seeing platinum uh, or palladium flying here, uh, is, uh, you know, the car industry really isn't fully geared up yet. Uh, you know, until all of that comes back in, if that were sort of, if we were to normalize the economy right now, silver, in my opinion, would be north of $30. Uh, because the industrial demand and the investment demand would certainly push it up at least to $30, if not higher. Mm -hmm. But it's that industrial component, uh, lack of demand at that level that is basically sort of weighing on silver. So I can see gold taking out the 2011 high fairly quickly. Uh, silver, if gold takes out the 2011 high, I certainly see silver in the 20s. Uh, you know, the 21, 23 range would certainly be a target that I think is, is, is uh, um, achievable. Uh, $50, uh, I don't see it until the economies uh, are fully geared up again and industrial demand picks up. Peter, I've really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you very much for your time. It's, as always, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Well, it's been a pleasure to be here, Niels. Thank you very much for watching Kitco News. For the latest in the precious metals markets, go to kitco.com. Stay safe and stay healthy.